Hello everyone, and welcome to Xamarin University. My name is Jesse Dietrichson, and in this lightning lecture, we're going to take a look at how we can recognize a shake gesture in iOS. We're going to start off by looking at some slides going over all the required components in order to recognize a shake gesture. After that, we're going to jump into an actual project and see how it works in action. But before we get started, we have to have an understanding of what the responder chain is. So basically what happens is when some type of motion event occurs, like a shake gesture, we're going to get notified about it through the responders chain. Now, the first thing in the chain is the first responder. Basically, the first responder is some type of object that's saying, hey, I want to be notified about when some type of motion event occurs. Now, if the first responder does not actually listen for those events, then that event will get forwarded through the chain. So the next thing in the chain is the view controller. If the view controller does not listen to it, it will then get forwarded to the window. If the window does not listen to it, it will get forwarded to the app. If the app does not listen to it, it will get thrown into the trash. And basically what happens when it gets thrown in the trash, it just gets discarded as if the event never happened. Now what's interesting with this is actually the window. Now by default, there is a built-in shake action. I'm sure you all have seen this happen. So you have a text field, for example, you type in some text, and if you shake your device, it displays a little pop-up for undo, where you can undo your text. So the reason why that's happening is because if we reach the window, and by default, the application supports shake to edit property is set to true, if both of those conditions are true, it's going to show a pop-up dialog saying if you want to undo something. That's a built-in default action. Now, there are actually two ways that we can make the action not happen, and we'll see all of this in our demonstration. But to go over it, the first thing that we can do to disable this functionality is inside of our app delegate, inside of the finished launching of, uh, method, we can go ahead and call UI application dot shared application dot application supports shake to edit and set it equal to false. By doing that, that will disable that built in behavior of shaking for the undo action. And once again, we'll take a look at this once we get into our exercise of how this actually works. The next thing we need to do is we actually need to become the first responder. In the chain, you saw that the first person to get notified is the first responder. So that's how we should go about doing this. So the first thing we need to do is we need to say that we can become the first responder. So on our view, we'll override the can become first responder property and set it equal to true. So we'll, we'll return true whenever you try to request this property. The second step is inside of view did appear, we're going to call the method become first responder. And this actually is where we request to become the first responder. And then step three is in the view did disappear, we're going to call resign first responder to help out and say, hey, when this page goes away, we're not the first responder anymore. So after we become the first responder, the next thing we need to do is actually listen to the events. So there are three methods that we can override. The first is motion began. Motion began, it gets fired when the motion begins. So as you begin to shake your phone, for example, this method will get fired. The second method is motion ended. And when the system thinks that your shake, for example, has ended, it will fire this method. And then finally, we have motion canceled. Motion canceled is when the motion is interrupted or not valid. And for example, if you're using shaking, 
a shake can get canceled if, for example, it lasts too long. So if you shake your device, let's say, for five seconds, it may fire motion canceled. Okay, so now we've seen all the required components. Let's go ahead and jump into a demonstration to see how it works in action. So go ahead and open up either Visual Studio or Xamarin Studio. Right now, I'm using Visual Studio. Now, be sure if you are using Visual Studio, make sure you are connected to your build host. As you can see, I'm connected to mine, so I can go ahead and continue on. If you're not, stop here and connect yourself to the build host. So let's go ahead and go to New Project, iOS, iPhone, and let's build a single view application. Now you can call your application whatever you want. I'm gonna call mine Shake and click OK. Once your application is done, you can go ahead and close this Getting Started and take a look at your Solution Explorer. We're gonna start off by going to our Storyboard. So you can double click that and open it up. So the first thing I wanna go over is taking a look at that built-in default behavior of when you shake your device, it will show the undo pop-up. So we're gonna go ahead and add a simple text field to our application and go ahead and resize this and just run the application. So go pick your device. I'm gonna run it on an iPhone 6S iOS 9 and deploy. So now that the application is running, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my Mac so we can take a look. So as you can see, my simulator is on the right-hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and change the value of text to hello world. And I'm going to simulate a shake gesture on the simulator by going to hardware and clicking shake gesture. Now, once I do that, notice how this pop-up said undo typing and I can click undo and that will go back to my old text. This is the default behavior that comes out of the box. And there are two ways to stop this. So let's go ahead and do the first way. So let's go back to Visual Studio. And let's go to our app delegate. So now that we're in our app delegate, we're going to go ahead and override the finished launching method. So let's say public override finished launching. And then inside the method, let's say UI application dot shared application dot application supports shake to edit. And we'll set the value of this to false. So basically what that means is we're saying no, we don't want the default behavior of that undo shake. Let's disable it. So now if we run the application again and go back to our Mac, the application will load. Let's go ahead and change the text to hello world. And let's simulate a shake gesture. Go to hardware, shake gesture. And notice how the pop-up does not appear. So we disabled that default behavior. So I wanted to show this to you because it's good having an understanding of what's happening behind the scenes. You can take this functionality and use it in your application if you want to. If you don't, you can disable it. Let's go ahead and switch back to Visual Studio. And now let's take a look at how we can provide a custom behavior when a user shakes their device. So let's go back to our storyboard and let's add a label to our view. And take that label and stretch it out, make it real big. Now we're going to display some text in this label when the user shakes their device. So let's go ahead and make this label multi-line. And you, to do that, you simply click on the label, go to your properties, Scroll down to see lines and change that to zero. And now it's a multi-lined label. 
We can also go ahead and empty out the labeled text so that's empty. Finally, let's go ahead and give it a name. I'm going to call mine my label and hit enter and now we're good to go. Let's go ahead and jump into our view controller now by going to our root view controller. And let's get started in here. The first thing we need to do is allow this view to be the first responder. So let's go ahead and override that property. Public override can become first responder. And we're going to go ahead and say return true semicolon, which means we can become the first responder. The second step we need to do is we need to scroll down to view did appear. If your template did not create this method automatically, you will have to edit yourself. Just simply do public override view did appear and it should automatically complete it, complete it for you. So inside of view did appear, let's go ahead and call the method become first responder. So once I call that, I will now become the first responder or request to become the first responder. Inside of view did disappear, we should also go and call resign first responder and say, hey, when this view is going away or is gone, let's resign first responder and not be it anymore. The last thing we need to do is simply override the motion events. So let's go down a little bit and say, public override motion began public override motion ended and public override motion canceled and what we're going to do for each of these is simply set some text in our label so when motion began fires we're going to say my label dot text plus equal to add on our text and say motion began has fired do a little backslash n for a new line take that copy it let's do that for motion ended and motion canceled and just change the text so now when the shake gesture begins ends and if it's canceled we'll see some text about it so let's go ahead now and redeploy our application and take a look There we go. So let's go ahead and go to our hardware, click shake gesture, and notice how began has fired, ended has fired. If we click it again, you'll see it says began has fired, ended has fired. So you can either do this with the simulator or actually with your physical device, you can go and shake it and you'll see these events firing. Now notice how we don't see the cancellation event. And that's because with the simulator, we can't actually simulate that. But with the real device, if you just shake your device really long, you'll see the canceled get fired. One point I want to make about this is most likely you're not going to put your code in both began and ended. Normally, you'll just pick one of them. Like, for example, you want to say when you shake your device, refresh the page you would most likely put that into motion ended instead of both of them. Now, the last thing I want to go over is if we switch back to Visual Studio, I want to go over some safety. Now, inside the motion events, we can see we have a parameter called motion, and we can use that parameter to make sure that this motion is actually a shake. So we can say if motion equals UI event subtype, motion shake then perform this action and we can add this check to all of our code to make sure that we're only firing this text and showing this text when it is a shake gesture so let's go ahead and run it again really quickly just to make sure it's still working okay and let's go ahead and go to our hardware click shake gesture and notice how the events still fire. The last thing I want to point out is right now we we're becoming the first responder and the first responder is the first person to get notified about these motion events. 
However, if you remove this code for becoming the first responder, so remove this property and remove the call to begin to become first responder and resign first responder, but you kept these motion events, you would see that if you ran your application, you'll still see this text being displayed. The motion events will still get fired. And that's because if you remember the chain, if the first responder does not respond, it goes to the view controller. And the view controller now has the opportunity. And as you can see, the view controller will pick up the slack and continue to run it. However, you should always follow the design pattern and become the first responder. So that brings us to the end of the lightning lecture. I hope you all learned something new about iOS and enjoyed the lightning lecture. If you ever have any questions, you can always email me at jesse.dietrichson at xamarin.com. Once again, thank you and have a nice day.